Hey guys, it's Jen. Welcome back to Joyful Living. Today I'm gonna to be sharing with you guys my top tips for long haul flights, and I'm really glad that you're here. So first of all, when it comes to long haul flights, I have done dozens of them. As the daughter of a commercial airline pilot and now the wife of a commercial airline pilot, I think I counted, I have done over three dozen long haul flights. And when I say long haul, to me, that's anything over five hours, five hours or less. And you know, I'm sure you can figure out what to do with yourself. <laughs> but if you're flying seven hours, eight hours, nine hours, 12 hours, 18 hours, the game changes just a little bit. Now, a lot of you are like me, and although you might love to fly first class, which I have done a few times, that is not always available to you. So let me say at the outset, if you can fly first class, fly first class. And then really nothing else I say is going to matter because if you're flying first class, you're fine. So I'm really speaking to those of us that are in the back. I have done a 10 plus hour flight in the middle seat in economy economy. And you know what I mean when I say economy economy. A lot of airlines now have economy, then they have kind of economy plus, and then they have business class, and then they have first class. So for the sake of this video, I'm talking to those of us in the cheap seats. I also reached out on Twitter and asked for advice over there, and I got so many responses that I'm actually going to do that as a completely separate video. So if you're not already subscribed, make sure you go ahead and do that and hit those bell notifications because part two of this video with all of the Twitter advice from seasoned travelers is going to go up on next week's video. So the first thing everyone asks me is, what do I wear? And what I have to say to that is wear something comfortable, but presentable. I don't like to wear things that are too slouchy. I will see people get on long haul flights in pajamas. I'm, I'm over all that. And maybe that's because I'm over 40, but I just, I want to be super comfy, but I also want to look cute. And I want to look cute getting on the airplane. And I want to look cute when I get off the airplane. And if you followed any of my solo travel tips, you know that blending in is kind of a big deal, especially if you're traveling to Europe and getting off the plane in sweats and then getting on the underground or whatever form of transportation you're using, wheeling your suitcase is a great way to scream, I'm an American. So you want to make sure that whatever you're wearing, it's going to be presentable for your destination. Typically, I like to go with something similar to what I have on today. This is actually a cute little dress. It's, it's not form fitting at all because I don't want anything that's going to constrain me. I will never wear jeans on a long haul flight. Uh, leggings are a great option with a tunic, something that you can very comfortably sleep in, but that also looks somewhat put together. I also would be cautious about what shoes you bring. Um, for a lot of flights, if I'm traveling in the fall or the winter, I'll go ahead and wear like my boots on board, but then I might pack in my bag a little pair of flats because I definitely don't wanna wear my boots the entire flight. And I definitely want to wear shoes when I on the airplane. Please don't be next to me and be barefoot on an airplane. It's gross. And please don't go to the bathroom on an airplane in your socks. It's so gross. You guys just don't do it. And also layers, because as we know, flights are either going to be freezing cold or boiling hot. There's not going to be a lot of in between. I actually prefer the aircraft to be on the cooler side, but that's because I usually have leggings and a dress and a cardigan, and then maybe also my travel blanket or a pashmina or something like that. And then typically, if you're flying any of the major US carriers, even in economy economy, they are going to give you a blanket and a pillow so you'll have that as well. But be sure to take things that you can, you know, layer and adjust so that your temperature is comfortable on the airplane. Ladies, one great trick on this is to pack a denim jacket or some kind of a structured jacket that you can put on over maybe your tunic top and leggings that will just make the whole thing look really put together and intentional. Okay, the second thing I get asked a lot is what should I eat and drink? 
And again, this is very personal and everybody is different. Personally, I cannot do alcohol on a long haul flight. Alcohol for me will relax me, but then it will wake me up and I will be wide awake. So I'm not likely to consume any alcohol the day before my trip and I'm not gonna consume any alcohol during my trip. The other reason I don't like alcohol is it's very dehydrating. And if you're doing a long haul flight, you wanna be taking in as much liquid as you can without having to go to the bathroom every five minutes because that's not actually fun either. Also try to eat things that are low in carbohydrates. Um, carbohydrates tend to make you retain water and you don't wanna retain water on a long haul flight. So if you can stick to kind of lean proteins and nuts, I'm a vegetarian. So for me, I'm gonna try to eat fruit and some nuts. I'm not gonna eat a lot of vegetables. My stomach does weird things when I travel. So I'm gonna be really, really picky. And that's another great tip. If you are a vegetarian, make sure you get with your airline and order a vegetarian at least 24 hours before your flight. Frequently, they run out of vegetarian meals. However, if you've told them in advance, then they put a little thing on your seat, at least the airline I fly with does this, and they will make sure that you get one of those vegetarian meals. A lot of the time, whatever they give me, I'm only gonna eat about a third of what's on there. So I also, I just don't eat a lot. I don't like eating a lot and then just kind of sitting. I always kind of feel like I would rather Air on the side of eating not very much. If you have bars that you like or something like that that could kind of see you through, that might be the best way to go. Just be really cautious that you're eating things that you know are gonna be easy on your stomach and don't eat things that are too rich. I find that those things make me feel just kind of sluggish and yucky. And if we're changing a whole bunch of time zones, we don't wanna arrive sluggish and yucky because of what we ate and drank when we were on the flight. Okay, this next question I love. How can I get good sleep? And I think the reason I love it is, y'all, I have a whole strategy. So let's say that um, it's a nine hour flight. Typically, and, and every flight's a little bit different, but typically they're gonna feed you a decent sized meal about an hour after takeoff, and then they're gonna feed you another decent sized meal about an hour before landing. That just seems to be the routine with all of the long haul flights and all of the major airlines. So what I will do is I will have my meal, and if it's a flight where I intend to get a good night's sleep, which I'm typically going to Europe, so I'm leaving at maybe seven o'clock, eight o'clock at night here in Atlanta, and I'm arriving there at maybe you know, seven o'clock, eight o'clock in the morning, depending on the time of year. So I wanna make sure that I can sleep. So how I do this is I eat my dinner. I kinda, I kinda stay on my regular schedule. It's, it's a whole thing, you guys. I eat my dinner just like I normally would, and then I I go to the bathroom and I have my little cabin kit. And I did a whole video about this. I'll put the link to it right there of what is in that cabin kit, but it's a smaller bag that kind of has all of my toiletries and things that I need to feel human on the flight. I'm gonna go to the bathroom. I'm gonna wash my face. I'm gonna get rid of all of my makeup, probably using a wipe. I'm gonna go ahead and put on my moisturizer. I'm gonna brush my teeth. I'm gonna take my contacts out. I'm doing all of the things that I normally do at home before bed. This may be a little extreme, but for me, it makes me feel more human. Now, the other benefit of doing this early in the flight is the bathrooms are not yet disgusting. So typically, they're still pretty clean at this point. I will take in some Clorox wipes and I basically clean the bathroom before I do all these things. So you're welcome, whoever uses the bathroom on the airplane after I use it, because I promise you it's clean and disinfected. Then I walk back to my seat and I settle in for the night. I may or may not actually sleep, but I'm at least getting some good rest. This is the point at which I'm gonna put on my neck pillow, I'm going to have my blanket, um, I'm probably gonna put on some kind of ambient music in my noise canceling headphones, which I cannot live without out on a long haul flight and I'm just gonna try to decompress. I don't stress out if I don't sleep because I'm kind of an anxious person and if I sit there going, you need to sleep, you need to sleep, you need to sleep, I'm probably not going to sleep. Now the big question for where you get better sleep is always is it aisle or window? I find that aisle is better for me because if I'm in the window seat, I get worried the entire flight that my seatmates are gonna fall asleep and I'm gonna have to go to the bathroom. <laughs> I learned this the hard way. I had a window once thinking that I would get better sleep and instead it just made me anxious the whole flight. So 
I find that I sleep better if I'm in the aisle, but that's, again, that's a completely personal thing. So yeah, when I wake up from my rest, I'm gonna go through the whole process just like I'm waking up for the day. I'm going to go back to the bathroom. I am going to apply just a little bit of makeup. I'm gonna put moisturizer on. I'm going to brush my teeth. I'm going to start the day. And a little tip on that, there's usually the last meal service, again, is about an hour before landing. Try to get all this done before that last meal service there will be a bum rush for the bathroom at the very last minute and the bathrooms at that point are not pleasant you don't want to be in there so if you can kind of avoid the rush and get that done before that last meal service that will go a long way and always feel free to ask the flight attendants when the meal service is going to happen they will for sure know and that will make sure that you can get in and out of the bathroom easily without wrestling with the carts in the aisle and all of that one word of caution on what you take on board. Please be aware that many people are sensitive to fragranced products. Try to stick with things that either have no fragrance at all or have very, very light fragrance and certainly nothing that one would spray that has any kind of fragrance because we want to be good neighbors and it's not like you can escape them if you've ticked them off. I mean, they're, they're right there. <laughs> <laughs> Another big tip that I use is I make sure that when I'm not sleeping, and I am gonna try to get a good chunk of maybe three to four hours of sleep, I am gonna get up and walk the entire length of the plane. Sometimes people think that you're like not allowed to do this, but as long as the seatbelt sign is off, you are more than welcome to walk the length of the plane. And if it is a long haul flight, there's probably a large galley area with some extra space. You can stretch a little bit. Don't be afraid to move on the airplane. That will keep everything moving. It will keep you from cramping up. It will make you feel a little bit more human. And I promise it will go a long way towards making you feel better once you arrive at your destination. I hope these tips have helped. I didn't want to make it overly complicated because really it's not that big of a deal, you guys. You're going to be fine. Everything that you truly need, I promise your airline is going to provide for you. I think you're going to have a really fabulous flight. And more importantly, I think you're going to have a really fabulous trip wherever it is your long haul flight might be taking you. Make sure you're subscribed so that you can get all of the great Twitter tips that I'm going to put in next week's video. Make sure you give this video a big thumbs up and I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.